Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the Tech360 channel and today we'll be doing something slightly different from what we usually do on the channel. So no, we're not going to be reviewing any camera gear today, although I have the Sony a7C on hand. But what I'm about to show you is how you can use a piece of camera gear that I'm sure most of you already own to take your videos up to the next level. Alright, so today I'll be showing you guys how you can use your camera strap to stabilize your shaky footage. So for this tutorial today, we'll be showing you some camera moves. Uh, but before we do that, I'll be explaining how to adjust your camera strap, how you're gonna, you know, stand and stuff like that, how you operate the camera. And the purpose of today's video is for people that are of all skill levels, so you don't have to be a professional, you don't have to be like intermediate. If you're a beginner, they'll be easy to execute, and I promise you, they'll look your, you'll, they'll make your videos look like they were shot professionally. So firstly, uh, let me talk about the gear that I'm using. I'm using the Peak Design camera strap and the Sony A7C. And the reason why I chose the Peak Design camera strap is because it's very easily adjustable to its length, which is sometimes crucial when you're executing these moves. So let me just run you through what you should be taking note of. So for the camera strap, the camera strap acts as sort of like a anchor for you so that you have another point of stabilization. So let me just demonstrate what that means. So you want to make sure that your camera strap is adjusted in such a way that when you have the camera at about, I would say, a four arms length, it is tight towards your neck. And if for some of you, if you have, if you're taller or if you're shorter, just adjust appropriately. And the camera moves are doable with whatever sort of cameras and camera strap that you want. So for me, this is my adjustment. So take a notice that four arms length, the camera at the center of my body, so I can maintain stability. And shoulders keep them squared up when you're doing the moves at all time. So you want to make sure that you are, when you're operating these moves, you're always keeping, making sure that there's tension on your strap. So apart from your upper body, what you want to make sure uh, for your lower body is to keep your feet shoulder width apart. You want to bend your knees slightly and you want to keep in mind that when you're walking and for the moves that you require to walk, you don't want to be stomping up and down. So the reason for having your weight on the balls of your feet is that you can transfer your weight seamlessly from one foot to the other, which is very crucial when you're executing uh, these smooth shots. So let me just run you through what we're going to be showing you today for the ca for camera movement. So firstly, we'll be talking about tilting and panning. Secondly, we'll be doing the dolly. Third will be the slider shot. And the fourth, which is my favorite, is the parallax. So we'll be first talking about the tilting movement. So the tilting movement is like what the name explains. You're basically having your camera uh, either coming from the top and down or from the bottom up. So how you want to execute that is that, like I mentioned before, remember to keep your feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, and your camera at the center of your body. And the thing to, the crucial thing to take note of is that at any one point, you always want to make sure that your camera strap is tight. So let's just say I want to shoot the beautiful Victoria Memorial Hall and I'm gonna get ready to execute the movement. So keep in mind the body stance that I mentioned just now. I'm just gonna get the frame that I want. So I'm gonna be doing a tilt down. So right now I am currently shooting the trees and then I'm slowly tilting down, making sure to keep my camera as stable as possible. And another way you can do that is to do a reverse shot. So you start from the bottom and just slowly and steadily move my camera up. So these shots work really great when you're trying to establish a location. And for me personally, I like to use the tilt down when I am, it's my opening shot. And then I'm establishing, okay, for example, I'm shooting the Victoria Memorial Hall. This is where I'm at. So for the panning, the concept of uh, panning and tilting is basically the same. The only difference of what you're doing is instead of tilting the camera from top to down or bottom up, you just want to move your camera from left to right. So keep in mind that you're not moving your shoulders too much because this will make your shots a little bit more shaky and where you want to really focus on the movement is your hips so keeping in mind your camera being at the core of your body and moving just left to right so you're not taking steps and stuff like that you're trying to maintain uh, the most stability throughout your shot at all time so let me just go ahead and do that shot right now shooting the same exact uh, subject the Victoria Memorial Hall so I'm going to tilt my body sideways, roll my camera and then in one steady smooth motion I tilt from my right to my left. 
So those are the two basic moves to run you guys through uh, the basics of how your body should be standing and practice this a little bit and then we'll move on to the more exciting camera stuff. So for the second movement, I'm here with my statue buddies that will be helping me execute this shot. So we'll be doing the dolly shot. The things that you want to take note, same as before. So the only difference is that instead of you know tilting up and down, going side to side, you are now using your legs. What you want to do is put one feet in front of the other, shoulder width apart. And the key idea that you need to understand for this particular shot is that your camera will be moving either moving in or moving out. So how do you execute that? Take note that what you want to do is not to move your arms. Your arms are always locked, making sure that your camera strap is tight like we mentioned before. And then you want to shift your weight from one leg to the other. So let's just say I want to do like sort of a punch in, so a dolly in. I will move my weight to the back of my right feet and then keeping my body as stable as possible I'm just going to slowly move in towards my subject. So shifting my weight from one foot to the other. Some things to take note of is that you don't want to be spreading your legs too far apart. Then you, want, you might be compromising your balance and without balance, then your shot might get shaky and that's not what we want. Another reason not to spread your legs too far apart is that when you are doing sort of like a imitating a lunge movement, your camera will dip slightly in height because of how you're bending your knees and that's not what we want for this shot. So those are the few things that you want to take note of and I'll be showing you guys how you can do this move with our statue buddies. Alright, so let's just say I found a particular subject that I want to shoot and that would be my friend over here. So, keeping what I explained in mind, feet shoulder width apart, one foot in front of the other, I get my, my frame up and in this particular shot, I'm framing him right in the center of my frame. I'm just going to shift my weight back slightly and then just ever so slightly moving the camera close towards him. So for those of you that are executing these shots, you don't, don't be too worried if you don't get it on the first shot. You can always just keep going back and forth. The key is to just familiarize yourself with the weight of the camera and your body stance. And then with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get it as smooth as butter. And I understand that for some shots in particular, you know, you don't, it's not always possible to keep the camera close to your core, but that's something that you want to keep in mind. So the higher you go or the lower you go, it's going to get a little bit more shaky. And for this particular shot, he's sort of at my chest level. So this is, this is something that I had to compromise on. I just have to make sure that the camera is as stable as I can make it to be. But yeah, that's basically what a dolly in or dolly out would mean. And, uh, let me explain some, some reasons why you may want to do this shot. The, for me, I like to use this shot when I'm trying to uh, shoot portraits or when I'm trying to create tension in the shot. So for example, like my friend here, when you're doing a punch in, the tension is created because you're slowly, slightly just moving closer towards it and it creates a very interesting feel. So for those of you that are up for more of a challenge, instead of just you know, moving from shifting your weight from one leg to the other, you can try walking. So this is where the whole ninja walking concept comes into play. So what you want to try to do is keeping your weight at the balls of your feet and then just walking forward ever so slightly, keeping your knees bent. So this move will take requires some practice for sure. Even I myself, I'm not exactly very confident in moving uh, perfectly still but I'm sure without with practice everyone can actually do it and it's not exactly that simple and for those of you that uh, want to just try to stick to the simple stuff you can always just go back to shifting your leg from front to back so I forgot to mention that this dolly shot will work best when you have things within uh, a frame so for example if you're shooting through a window and you're sort of like punching in or in my personal opinion I think if you're shooting through a window and you're moving out and dollying out the windows will actually come into frame and that will create a really really cool effect another thing to exaggerate the movement even more is that the closer up you shoot the more movement you would see in the frame as compared if you're shooting wide because then the things with relevance in distance to your camera and uh, what you're shooting might not be as exaggerated so uh, just some things to keep in note but without further ado let's move on to the next camera movement all right, so for the sliding movement, it's basically the same as the dolly, but this is, in my opinion, even simpler than that. So for the dolly, we were moving our weight from front to back or back to front. So for sliding, it's basically the same technique. So let me just demonstrate here with uh, my tree. Before that, let me explain to you uh, what scenarios you would use a sliding shot. So for me, what I normally do is when I'm revealing something, so in this case, 
uh, let's say I want to review this beautiful Asian civilizations museum in front of me and all of these monuments. So I find a subject where I can, a foreground subject where I can use to sort of block my frame and then I'm just going to slowly move my camera to the right revealing the scene. So we just show you guys what I'm going to do without rolling first. So you want to obviously frame up your shot even before you do the sliding movement. So get your end frame in mind and then just moving back slightly. And keep in mind that we are also moving our weight from one leg to the other, but we're not moving from front to back this time. We are moving it from side to side. So like before, just shift your weight from one leg and then slowly slide your camera to the other. So one thing to keep in mind is that this is not the same as the panning. The difference is panning is sort of like a pivot and your body is moving. A sliding shot would be keeping your core and your shoulders squared up to your feet. And the only thing that you're really moving is just moving your weight from one leg to the other. So you're getting basically a sliding movement and not panning. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute the shot. So what I want to first do is frame up my final frame, which is here. And then I'm just going to slide back and keep in mind that I'm shifting my leg from one, my weight from one foot to the other. In this case, we would move from my left leg to my right. Going behind the frame and then just moving it ever so slightly. And there you go, that's basically the slider movement, very simple. And uh, I would say like, things would be really interesting if you have, you don't exactly always have to use uh, something to review. If you have perhaps like some flowers and stuff like that, doing a slider shot will create a lot of interest in your video footage because you have things in the foreground that's moving and uh, it's just more dynamics and it adds a lot more depth into your shot. So some things that you want to keep in mind to make sure that you can uh, take your videos to make them look more interesting than they already do. So one thing that you can do when you wanna when you wanna do the slider movement, like I previously mentioned before, is using foreground in the uh, using using items in the foreground to create more depth in your shot. So you don't always have to be behind something and then revealing it. I'm gonna show you guys what that what that would mean. So let's just say I have some foliage here and some grass, and I just the basic concept you wanna do is try to get low, but just uh, know that a lot more is being compromised here because your weight is a little bit more shaky and for people that's not exactly as flexible as myself, this might be a little bit challenging, but let's just try it out. So the same concept applies. You want to keep your camera strap tight and then you're basically just moving your weight from one foot to the other like so. For our fourth and final movement, it'll be the parallax. So I'm here with my little lion statue, which will be my point of subject. And let me just run you guys through what's going to happen with the camera. So it's basically a combination of the slider and the uh, panning move. But it's just that the difference is the focal point will be trying to keep the subject in the center of the frame at all times. So what I mean by that is imagine there is a pole here and this is the center and it's locked there. Your camera is basically going to be revolving around the subject. So things to keep in mind is uh, same as before, camera strap, adjusting it so that it'll be tight when you are keeping your arms slightly away from your body like so and I'm just gonna frame up the lion right at where I want it to be and then you, you want to move your weight from left to right as before but the only thing now is you're combining it with the movement of your weight so sort of like so just rotating it around ever so slightly so these shots really work well when you're trying to sort of uh, include it into your B-roll if you're doing like product photography, product videography, and you want to just show the different aspects of a subject. So like so, like this, like this particular statue, I'm sort of just starting from here, moving to the right, showing more details of the side, which creates more depth, uh, allowing your viewers to know like, okay, this isn't just a two-dimensional object. So before we end the video today, I just wanted to share with you guys some bonus tips that might help further stabilize your footage even more. So after running through all the four camera moves that we did today, don't be afraid to bring it into post-production, let's say Premiere Pro or Final Cut to further stabilize your footage with warp stabilizer. Because sometimes when you're doing these moves, you get tired like uh, using a longer lens and stuff like that, and then your shots might get a little bit more shaky, which will be able to be saved in post. So don't be afraid to do that. Other than that, also make sure that you turn on image stabilization like I mentioned before. So like the 
A7C it has 5-axis uh, body image stabilization. And also if your camera can shoot higher frame rates, like let's say 50 frames, then you'll be able to slow it down twice, or even shooting it at 100 frames, 1080p, which the A7C can do, that would further reduce the speed of your footage and therefore making your shakes less obvious. But other than that, I hope you guys took something away from this video today. And I want you guys to just keep in mind that you don't need expensive camera gear to be able to make your shots look beautiful. All you really need is a camera strap. So make sure you follow us on our social media platforms at Tech360TV and also follow me on my channel at Ryan Mamba. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.